This has to be the best plan me and Saigon. <laughs> it's absolutely packed full of stuff. Listen to that crunch. Oh my god. My god, you guys. We're at one of the busiest banh mi places in all of Saigon and we cannot wait to try it. Just have a look at how busy it is right here guys, there's probably around 100 people standing outside. <laughs> Very, very excited to kickstart this food tour with the famous banh mi Quinh Hoa. Sorry. Whoa. Crowds upon crowds of people. Crazy, no? Wow, yeah, but in this place here is only for picking up yourself. Over there is from the same bakery, a grab pickup that it has the same amount of people waiting there. And there's also an inside, which is also full. So yeah, I'm very, very excited to be trying this banh mi. Yeah. This is the outside of the store. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ban Mi Huin Hoa. Since 1989. Wow. I think we're going to be waiting for quite a while before we dig our teeth into this sandwich. But today we're going to give you guys a food tour around Saigon, trying some of the typical Saigon dishes. Let's do it. Oh. I got the goods. Ah, Luke is waiting inside in the AC, of course. Gentleman that he is. Hello. <laughs> we got the goods, and this also the greens that you can add on top yeah, so of your bunny. It's By the way, a little bit of a wait. I think like 20 minutes or so it took. It's okay. Yeah. But there is an insane amount of people queuing outside for it, so... And uh, there's no variation to this, by the way. You can just, like... This is the banh mi that it is. There is no... I want this or I want that. It's just... That's the banh mi. And then um, you can come here, beside it, basically. And I think we can order some drinks. Do you want to have something to drink, maybe? Something cold to drink, maybe, yeah. What do you want? Maybe uh, orange juice or something. Orange juice? Yeah. Sure. Look at the size of this thing. Oh my god. It's huge. It's an absolute monster and um, okay. price-wise obviously it is like a little bit more but that you get a oh lot my of God. value for money I think. So I can already see some pate, some uh, maybe chicken or pork floss, I don't know. Onions. Uh, onions and there seem to be like below there seem to be some sort of sausage. Do you want any greens? Or? I think I'm going to just Are you going to raw dog one? it? Oh my God. Uh, unbelievable wow 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 okay so they started playing music very loudly in there so we actually had to just come outside but i'll tell you what guys that first bite was something else i still have the entire band me left to try and i haven't actually really even gotten close to the ingredients yet and just have a look over there you can see there's probably around 100 grab drivers and they are all dealing with the different grab orders right now from this place and there's also a queue Sorry, <laughs> all good. Uh, crazy, absolutely crazy cube. Right guys, I managed. Oh, thank you so much. Come, Come on. on. I managed to put some greens onto my banh mi as well. And I'm so excited. This is a huge portion, by the way. Um, I think one of them would have been enough for the two of us. I don't know if you can see the size of it, but it's like, it's massive. It's so big. Ridiculous. Um, I don't even know how to take a bite out of this in order to actually also have some of the ingredients and not only bread. <laughs> mm. The mm. consistency of the bread oh, is super the crunchy. The bread is no? very fresh. Yeah. That's so nice. Oh my god. Can you see how much stuff is in there? It's literally like the size of my bigger than my head probably yeah it's absolutely packed full of stuff listen to that crunch oh my god mm. it's like squeezing out on both sides basically mm. Mm. it's so good oh my god mm. 
it's so tasty and it's like um, 68,000 herb on me but this thing can keep you going literally the entire day if you eat one half in the morning and one half in the evening it would be enough calories for the entire day yeah 100% I'm gonna give this another bite as well here so it's basically packed full of pate crispy onions I'm assuming um, kind of chunks of pork and then I think you have cheese and stuff like that in there as well uh, yeah I don't even know how to approach it in the first place. I got my first bite out, but just barely. So here we go. That was ridiculous. My jaw actually cracked opening trying to trying to eat this. Have a look. I'm gonna need to go for a very, very long walk after eating this. And there is uh, plenty of meat, plenty of crispy onions in there. And yeah, the texture of the flavor and everything about this is just top notch. And it's well worth the money, I think, for sure. I have been munching on it behind the camera. <laughs> and you can see how many different uh, types of meat there are. There's like one, two, three. The floss is like four. And then there's also red pork there, so maybe five different types of meat. Uh, plus, obviously, the vegetables. And then, uh, but you can add the vegetables yourself and the pickled stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's a lunch and a half, I want to say. Mm -hmm. We got some cam ep as well, so some orange juice. And it seems to be fresh orange juice over a ton of ice. It's incredibly hot right now in Saigon. So, this orange juice is the perfect sort of like combination to go with the van me together beautiful really really refreshing cools you down and this here is going to heat us up and keep us full so it's a nice balance of things i want to say one more bite oh my god this has to be the best van me in saigon and if it's not i don't know what i don't is know what is <laughs> But yeah, incredible. You can really see how much meat is going on in there, guys. So, we've got pate. We've got probably about half a kilo of unexplainable meat as well. Hello. <laughs> Chicken, pork, beef, probably everything in between. Only about halfway through this. And I have never been so full in my life. And Naomi is exactly the same. I don't think I'm gonna finish it, I think. Mm. Um, next time or if you do ever do come here and you're not like crazy hungry or fasting for two weeks or something just order one one is mm -hmm. enough for two people yeah one for one for two people is uh, definitely more than enough put it that way they put like an entire pack of pate in here I already had like half of it it's like it's so much yeah oh my god incredible value for money though that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> Well guys, easily, by far, the best pan mi that we've tried while being in Vietnam. Unbelievable. Cost-wise, it was expensive, okay? Over 60,000 dong. But you're getting the equivalent of like three pan mi sandwiches in one, genuinely. And neither of us were even close to finishing that sandwich. It's unbelievable. And I think I'm gonna be full and both of us will be full for a very long time. So what we're gonna do now is actually just go for a long walk in the midday heat and try to burn this off before we bring you to get some more food. Yeah, that actually never happened. It's the very, very first time a dish has ever defeated both of us. Usually they defeat me, but not Luke and uh, yeah. Super, super good uh, start to the Saigon food tour, but I do feel like uh, Saigon already defeated us, I have to say. Very, very tasty them. Well, guys, the streets of Saigon are fully alive right now. There's plenty happening, even though it is 2 p.m. in the day. Sun is quite literally at its hottest. There's still plenty going on, plenty things happening. People are out having food, enjoying their Saturday. It is Saturday, by the way. But next up on our list 
we're going to try the famous broken rice dish, which I believe is called Kom Tam. Now, I could be saying that entirely wrong, but we're heading to a place that seems to be pretty recommended locally to try the broken rice dish. It's gonna be our very first time trying it. We've had banh mi before, but that banh mi really blew our socks off. I'm telling you, it was the best one that we've ever had. And now, let's see if we're going to enjoy the famous broken rice dish. If we don't get hit by <laughs> the mad scooters of Saigon. Oh, yeah. Traffic is pretty crazy here, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, something else. Although it is relatively quiet in this area right here, it's nothing compared to the main busy intersections of this city, I'll tell you that much. I have to say as well though, it's nap time right now. So. It is, yeah, true. Just around like 1 p.m. usually in Vietnam, everybody's kind of slowing down a little bit because of how hot it is and taking a nap, so yeah. that's why it's probably a little bit more quiet right now. That's very true. They're in the, they have like a siesta, so for anybody watching from Europe, a lot of the southern Europe has the siestas where in the middle of the day, because of the usual heat that they get, they literally will just go and have a nap. And you'll see that everywhere in Saigon, everywhere actually around a lot of Southeast Asia, you'll see people in the middle of the day just literally sleeping wherever their uh, store might be. They'll set up oftentimes a hammock or a bed, like even in the middle of a market, and they'll just be laid out sleeping. So that's what it's like right now. And now this street here that we're on, is actually very quiet and <laughs> it's a nice change a nice change of pace for once but we're nearly at the com tam so let's go and give it a try have to have the right priorities <laughs> right guys we made it to com tam 86 this is where we are going to try our first ever or let's say our first ever official broken rice dish i believe we might have had it on the way to Ho Chi Minh City actually but yeah this already looks really really good let's just go in and have a try it's okay camera it's okay yeah okay come on oh wow what a cool place pick a table xin chào you want this one or this one this one okay come on thank you Oh, you even have it in Vietnamese and, and English. English. Um, I don't know what's the most typical one to actually try, but... Which one is the best? Which one is your favorite? I don't know. Or most popular, maybe. This one? This one. Or this one here. Um, how do you say? Um, suan? So, by... Opla. Opla. <laughs> uh, this one? This one. For me? Should we get this one with it? Yeah, sure. This one. One. Yeah. one. And a drink, maybe uh, water or tea. Oh, uh, cha da, maybe. Chada. Have cha da. One and uh, one Coca Cola. Come on. Come on. Sounds good. That was easy. Very easy. I just always feel like when you're looking at like a really big menu, it gets a little bit confusing and usually the people of the restaurant know best what is the good dish, so just ask which one is the best and <laughs> they usually show you which one. Come on! Okay guys, I have my weapons, I have my broken rice and now we're ready to dig in I think. So looks really good you have a fried egg here on top you have what seems to be some beautiful looking pork you have this stuff which i'm not too sure what that is actually but it has like a stringy consistency and then you have what seems to be like uh, the vietnamese kimchi style here and then you have some cucumber and tomato uh, so let's see what we can do with this little dish here so i'm gonna take my spoon I'm gonna go in here to the fish sauce, get a little bit of this, and then what I'm gonna do, because some of you, some of you guys told us to do this, you just like sprinkle the fish sauce over the top, so you evenly coat it, because the fish sauce is quite strong. <laughs> so you just have to basically just give it a sprinkle over the top, and then it's evenly coated. 
beautifully distributed over the, uh, the dish. So I'm gonna go in, grab some of that beautiful looking pork, grab some rice, and give you a taste of broken rice or kamta. That is right up my alley right there. Good flavor to the pork, it's like a barbecue type of flavor to it. The rice as well is an interesting texture. Um, I guess because it is broken rice, it's um, smaller, so like the grains of the rice are sort of broken down into smaller pieces than a typical grain of rice. Um, I'm gonna give the egg a try here too. It looks like a, a pretty much perfectly cooked egg, just not runny on the inside. Usually I like my egg to be a little bit runny on the inside, but I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna try that with some of the rice as well and see how it is. Looks absolutely fantastic. This is good. The tip with this here, to take some of that and sprinkle it over the top, that's a winner right there. Because you don't have you don't have the overwhelmingly salty taste from that fish sauce. It's just a little bit over the top. This is really, really tasty, I'm telling you. Fantastic. All right, Kevins. So my dish kind of seems to be um, a noodle dish, so bun, the typical Vietnamese white noodles, which I, th I believe are rice noodles. Uh, you have some of that pickled uh, vegetable here on the side and then um, you have sort of mixed type of meat. So some of it is the ground pork type of a meat and some of it is uh, sliced pork. And then you also have loads of greens on top which look really, really tasty. Now, I have to say, I'm not a big fan of that uh, fish sauce, so I'm not gonna sprinkle that over top, but this would probably be the place where you would sprinkle that the way you looked it. <laughs> I'm just gonna go in and try it the way it is. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. That sliced pork is beautiful. It's yeah. very tasty. And then you also have loads of these sort of small um, peanuts on top sprinkled over it which give it a really nice sort of um, crunch. Super, super tasty. Also want to try the ground up pork, which is sort of made into this little meatball of wonders. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is really beautiful. It's very tasty. Not too salty, not too spicy. Just kind of beautifully balanced. Now, of course, Naomi wouldn't be my name if it wasn't for me putting this stuff on top of everything. <laughs> shot out. It just came straight out. I think something was stuck in it. I tried to just squeeze and it, nothing came out, so I had to squeeze harder and then it just went bam. <laughs> anyway, now I have enough sauce on my noodles. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. Look at this beauty. The beauty. I cannot get any of the noodles on my fork. <laughs> come on. I'm talking about how beautiful you are. You don't want to come to me. Mm. Oh, sorry. I'm stealing some of Luke's cucumbers to chase the spicy sauce. Mm. Now it's nice and spicy. Perfect. I love it. Fantastic, guys. Very, very happy with this and uh, I'm gonna definitely dig in. I love this, um, sprinkling this over the top, it really changes the whole sort of dynamic and the flavor of this dish too. And uh, if you are wondering where we are, as we said, it's Comtam 86, the plant is actually blocking the name, but you have everything kind of on the, the menu here as well. So whole variety of different types of broken rice dishes and obviously noodle dishes too. Fantastic. And this place also seems to be a lot more sort of local than the previous place because I kind of felt like the previous place, as amazing as it was, it was really, really worth it. But there were like no Vietnamese people inside. It was all um, Asian and Western tourists, sort of, kind of from the vibe that I got. And this here seems to be a lot more local. And probably the flavor is then also a lot more local, I want to say. Really good.
the usual struggles here in Saigon of trying to cross the road, but wow. That broken rice dish was absolutely delicious. Naomi's as well was something else. A very, very tasty restaurant indeed that we stopped off. The locals as well that ran that place were incredibly friendly. We have a gap in the traffic now, so I think we're okay. I think we're gonna survive. Here we go. I cannot believe that you talk about broken rice in the middle of crazy oh, yeah. traffic. But, oh. uh, that food was amazing, no? So tasty, really, really good. Really very good and a great value as well. What was the total cost for both? Uh, it was 97,000 dong. 97, dong. 97, dong like for the broken rice and the bun tit nuang that Naomi had as the well. Coca-Cola and the ice tea. Coca-Cola and an iced tea. All of that together for less than 100,000 dong. So absolutely amazing. Now, once again, we are in the streets going for a walk, trying to walk off that incredible food. Between that banh mi and that food that we just had, we are overwhelmed with the amount of carbohydrates that are in our system right now. Also, the heat is a killer here at the moment. Uh, a lot of you guys have been commenting since our first video, which actually would have went live just yesterday. Our first video in Saigon, uh, you guys have been saying we came at the total wrong time and we couldn't agree more. The weather is extreme. It's uh, hovering between 35 to 40 Celsius here. The humidity is like 75% to 80%. So yes, it is pretty rough to walk around in, but nonetheless, it's helping us but it was, in a way to burn off the calories. I kind of feel like it was anticipated though for yeah. this area in this time of the year. I was actually really surprised about how cold uh, the north and the central provinces of Vietnam were. So yeah, I was kind of thinking it would be like this everywhere in Vietnam. So yeah, yeah. very, very true. And now guys, we're in a nice local area of the city. We're gonna enjoy a little bit of a walk. And then of course we have some more food to try. We walked around for a little while just to sort of digest and tackle the next dish. And that's exactly where we are right now. We are at Phu, Vietnam, which apparently has a Michelin star. So I'm very excited to be trying this. I just don't really know yet which one of these we're gonna try. Wow, big choice. Huge list, no? Mm. Plenty to choose from. So you have the typical uh, pho dishes. I think what I would like is a beef pho. It's usually the one that I uh, will typically go for. It's like a rare beef pho. And they have a whole bunch of different ones. Literally, actually, 15 different types of pho to choose from. And all of them are ranging between 60 all the way up to 100,000 per pho. So yeah, it is a little bit on the expensive side, but in terms of uh, it being Michelin star, I guess that's what you can expect. They also have a whole bunch of different juices as well to choose from, like always. But I think what I'm gonna go for is something on the side of beef. Now, I might just get a normal size or a small size. Yes. Uh, which we can actually get two different small ones. To get two different small so foods. Yeah, and then have a mix between the two. So they have a raw beef pho, which we'll get a small one of those maybe. And then a well done flank pho, or they also have a flatty flank. What is that? A flatty flank, maybe a fatty flank. Crun oh, yeah. Crunchy flank. Tendon pho as well, and beef ball. I would get ball. a raw beef pho and then a crunchy flank. Crunchy flank pho, small. Yeah? yeah, sounds good. You guys, this is the small size. Look at my hand beside it, it's really not small. Uh, it's not a small dish at all. I'm really happy that we ordered small, by the way, because it's, uh, <laughs> if this is small, what do you think is medium okay. or large? The large size must be like... Family, yeah. feeding eight people. Like a table or something. We just uh, saw there, by the way, it says that they are having homemade noodles, which uh, makes me even more excited to try this. Now this one is the uh, raw beef pho, and this one is the crunchy flank crunchy, or something? Crunchy flank uh, <laughs> pho, and this one is the raw one. So this is the like Thai or pho Thai, I believe. 
and then um, for the I think it's the crunchy flank one. Oi V. Oi V. We're gonna add in some stuff here into this. Let's see what we have. Choose your weapons. Weapon of choice here. Oh, these are really thick chopsticks. Really long. Really thick and really long as well. Um, do we have any pepper? That's what I'm wondering. I don't see any. Usually there's pepper. Usually there's pepper that you can add in, but I'm gonna add some of this stuff here because. I recognize this in nearly every photo place. I'm gonna put some of this in here. Oh, it smells so good. Please, sir, can I have some more? Yep. Mm. Smells absolutely incredible. Oh, Jesus. Smells I'm really rich as well. Now we're really not gonna be attacked by vampires anytime soon. Yeah, plenty of garlic. And uh, other than that, there's this here, which I'm not gonna lie, it looks kind of uh, threatening. It's like I can't tell if it's chili or something else. It smells chili and a little bit of vinegary as well. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in here, just tap that on. And then to be honest, I'm just gonna try it the way it is. Oh, wait, I'm gonna put a little bit of lime in as well. So I love the, the taste of lime over the top. Can you do that for me as well, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Here we go. Let's give it a try, guys. Mix it all together. See if I can actually use these chopsticks. <laughs> I mean, it's a wooden one, and theory it has more grip than the metal one. Yeah, true, it's not bad. It's probably very, very hot. The noodles look nice and thick. That beef, the beef is incredibly good. Mm. Mm. Yep. Beef is very, very juicy, very tender. It has barely any chew to it as well. Try the noodles. The noodles, in theory, should be the breadwinner of the thing. Mm. Homemade noodles for sure, they literally melt in your mouth as soon as you put them in, so this is a, definitely a winning food for sure. The beef, I can't get over the quality of the beef. Barely even have to chew at all, honestly. This is really, really fantastic. Oh, you got me really excited to be trying my food. But I kind of feel like you need to be adding a little bit more of the green stuff, huh? Oh yeah. At least like a little Put in bit. some greenery, yeah. Never sure what is what. I don't know. A lot of these things are not uh, available on the European market, so I have no idea what I'm adding. <laughs> <laughs> this here looks a little bit more leafier. Let's do this one as well. Okay. Let's give it a little stir. There we go. Yeah. These chopsticks are very long. <laughs> it's like a weapon. Let's go ahead and try the crunchy flank. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good, no? That's very good. It's not crunchy, though. <laughs> I'm wondering what about it is crunchy. The soup takes the crunch away. Um, it's probably the. This means that it's like a little bit of a fattier cut. Yep. Probably. Give the noodles a try as well. The noodles are unbelievable. Mm. Oh my god. It's such a pleasant texture for the noodles. Mm. Oh yeah. I do feel like the noodle is definitely the part that makes the difference. Obviously, the meat is very high quality. It's very, very tasty meat as well. But um, in order to like actually point out a difference in between this food and, for example, the food that we had in the last place, it's for sure the noodles in this case. Super, super tasty. <laughs> it's for sure. It's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's for sure. Um, hey, this is for sure the the best pho. It's really, really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I think this is number one. Top quality. The one, the one we had in, uh, with Nate and Adriana was fantastic as well. But mm -hmm. the noodles here, I think, just are unbeatable. The noodles are the bread winner. The noodle winner. Incredibly good, guys. And for me, being honest, I love the beef. So everything about this juicy, tender, delicious beef is incredible. The only thing, the only thing that's missing for me here is the pepper. Pepper. I don't know why they don't have pepper. Uh, usually, it's pepper is the very first thing that we add in on top of the food, but that's all right. This is fantastic.